I'm ready to assemble this soft start circuit here from Harbach Electronics. And I'll just go in order probably here at the assembly list or bill of materials. So they've got uh, 200 microfarad uh, caps. Again, they have to be installed with the correct polarization. And it's clearly labeled on the board, so it should be easy to orientate them the correct way. Okay, the next one is a diode. There's only one diode, it's a 1N4005. I was trying to orientate parts so you could read the labels from the top, but this one's written all the way around, so there's no way I can do that. And again, make sure the polarization is correct. It's clearly marked on the silk screen on the printed circuit board. Next part is there's two relays and they have five pins on here so you can't install them incorrectly and they're both identical. There's both the relays. Let's see, there's um, two power resistors, and um, this one has the 10 ohm resistors for 110 volts. There's a 20 ohm resistor for 220. I know eventually this amplifier is going to get. Um, Converted over to 220, so these resistors will have to be changed out at that time. There's one other resistor, which is 2.4K2 watt. That's what this one is. Looks like the color code's right, but I'll double check it just to be sure. And it's correct. You can get an idea what that looks like. And of course the back side soldered. The instructions show this circuit board mounted with the component side facing the chassis. The holes are labeled uh, A, B, C, D. And they say you can either attach it with these holes that they've got in the corners or RTV it to the chassis with the, on the relays, and I'm not sure which I'm going to do. 
I'm afraid if I just put RTV on there, you can't easily take it off to work on it to replace those resistors. So I think I'm going to go ahead and drill holes and attach with screws. So I've already gone ahead and marked out the holes. Let's make sure there's nothing on the other side. As long as I'm careful, it should be okay. I'm going to center punch where each one of these holes is to go. And there are a few components that are close by that I'll have to be careful. trying to take it slow and easy so that I don't punch through too far and damage something else. Let me clean up this debris and I'll come back. Okay, you can probably see these mounting screws now. I'll put a nut on each screw. I'm not going to attach the board yet, but I'll give you an idea what it's going to look like here. Something like that. And then this is going to be installed upside down. And I forget which direction it is. Let's see here. A and B, so it's going to be this way, like this. So it'll be installed like that with a nut on each corner there to hold it in place. And it's real secure. It can never fall off unless you actually want to disassemble it. There's one other wire that has to be soldered onto this board at terminal F here. The next thing I'm going to have to do is cut this lacing that's on here to remove this uh, red and black wire that are going to get soldered onto that board. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it and I'll um, re-secure it with just wire ties when I'm done. Okay, so there's two sets of wire here, of um, black and red wire, so you have to make sure that you get the correct one. Before that comes on frayed, I can put a wire tie on here. So you have to make sure it's the, the wire that goes to this terminal Q. You 
I can tell because I, I, when I pulled it, I could see it move, and it's probably this one here. Okay, it's these two, this black one and this red one here. So one end gets soldered to one end of the board, the other end to the other end. So if you look at this, there's a diagram here. A and B, so it goes this way. Black on this side, red on this side. So I'm just going to cut these two right in the middle. You know, I'm gonna have to cut this this um, wire lacing all the way back because that red wire won't reach unless I do. Thought I could get by without doing that. Okay, that's soldered in there. I think I can go ahead and attach this board. Okay, all the wires are soldered on. I'm going to go ahead and attach the board. And I'll get some more wire ties and redress these wires. Okay, the only thing left is this wire to get hooked up, this red wire. I've turned the amplifier around and it says that this w red wire, the small red wire from the circuit board goes to uh, terminal 2 of terminal strip S, which is the power select terminal. And it goes to this pin 2 and they've got a diagram here. I'll strip this back and solder it on. I think that's the last item to be done. Ok, 
Okay, all that's left is put the tubes back in and put it back together. So that completes that modification. Hopefully everything still works. There's two screws at the front here, the front edge. I'm not installing those. The reason I'm not is that is underneath the case, the outer case, and you can't take this off unless you pull it out of the outer case. If with these two are left out, then you can remove the top to uh, replace the tubes if you have to without taking it out of the whole case. Here's what the amplifier looks like after it's been cleaned back up some and the mods put back in. It looks pretty decent. It's not in perfect shape, but it's not bad.